Hey everybody, welcome back to Fawan Channel with Fawan and Micro. Hi everybody, I'm so glad to be back here. I'm excited to see who this next witness is. We're Fawan and friends on an ace, or ace attorney. Pigeon lawyer. <laughs> Avery attorney. Pigeon. Pigeon. I'm a falcon, not a pigeon. Anyways, <laughs> so we, uh, we just uh, uh, spoke with the investigator, the head investigator. Inspector Valerti. And, uh, Javert, if you ask me. And we proved that he was wrong in assessing that because our client had bloody paws, that it was the blood of the victim instead of the fact that she didn't eat with any silverware and she had a bloody steak. And the judge was extremely condescending towards the Parisian oh, police department. Oh, he was so upset. It was insane. Oh, good. man. He was so sassy back then. Sassy. Him. All right. Snarky, I guess. Snarky sassy. Anyway, so they're about ready to call their next witness and we're going to see... Who that is? Who do you think it is? Oh, could it be the maid or the photographer? I think it might be the photographer. I think you might be right. Ready? Yes. Who we did not talk to. Not no. Remember we lied to him. Yeah, we lied to him. <laughs> well, we'll see well, how that goes. I I chose to tell the truth. You lied. <laughs> I, I'm not Sparrowson in real life. Mm -hmm. I swear. I call upon let some see Monsieur Robicio Robinho, the uh, photographer who attended the banquet the night of the murder. You're right. Monsieur Robito Robino, Robitio Robino, please approach the stand and recite the oath. How does it go? I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. It's a little cliche to be perfectly honest. Oh, he's a hipster. Such a hipster. He is a, he's hipster. a hipster. Finch. Could we, uh, could the witness up please introduce himself for the uh, court record? <laughs> As if anybody in this courtroom does not immediately recognize me. I'm the great Monsieur Robizio Robinho, cutting-edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures, I capture their very essence. Je suis l'artiste. Tu es un peep, 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 peep. What's that mean? I, you are a pipe. I'm an artist, you are a pipe. I don't Wait. know what the pipe means. No, there's a, a famous painting of a pipe, and above it it says, Tu es pipe, or something like that. Well, we are uh, not artists. I don't, I don't remember. I, I've seen... I know what it's talking about. I know what it's referencing. I just... I'll show you after the video. Oh, Robinho. <laughs> Too swanky here. You may have seen my works in hip magazines like La Branche or C'est Chouette. I can send you tweets if you love tweets. He's <laughs> a bird. Get follow, it? Follow me on Twitter. Don't follow Robinho on Twitter. What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication. Come on, Falcon. It's the 19th century. Go with the times already, man. Yes, yes, your works are um, impressive, Monsieur Robinho, but let's get out of business. Can you tell us your uh, activities on the night of the murder? Very well, I was hired by Beren Rorguil to capture the evening's events. I swear, I think he's the one who did it. Uh, the Baron or Robinho? Ro uh, no, the Baron. I arrived at 7 in the evening, I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet and one fantastic photograph. Then I billed Beren Rorguil and left. True artist. <laughs> now, with regards to the photograph itself, who did you photograph? I thought you might ask. I brought a copy so you all could see for yourselves. Oh, very good. Let's take a closer look. That is not what we saw. That is not what we saw at all. Oh, oh. My word, this is an exquisite picture, isn't it? Let's see who do we have here. In the middle, we see a Baron Dorakwia, the line who hosted the event. <gasps> the clock has hands. Clock has hands. We have the original picture, and it was the uh, our client was, was there. there. On top of that, if he photoshopped him in, basically, I think he is involved. Yep. I think he's an accomplice. Yep. And the clock has hands. Yep. I love that the clock has hands now. And on the left, we see I'm Senor Portuardinia, the father of the defendant today, Catherine. And finally, we see the uh, housemaid, Colleen Duhal, who I suspect may have snuck in the photo. And the picture uninvited. As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Monsieur Granouy, and the second is the defendant, Dame Catherine de Mille. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Just a moment, Monsieur Robinson. This proves nothing. So the defendant and the victim were not photographed with the others. That doesn't mean that they were in the garden tonight at that point. Hold your horses, Falcon. Not done yet. The prosecution may continue. Behind the photograph, two subjects, we see a clock with the uh, time set at 7.30. Now, 
Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Volertis told us earlier, that's the exact time the murder took place. Do you see, Falcon? Every suspect has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dan Cutchelon herself. Hey, Falcon, that photograph doesn't seem right. It looks different to the one we borrowed from Urbino's studio. I see it too. Our photograph shows Caroline Duhart, Dame Catiline, and Signor Perrier. Perit, Perit, uh, blah, blah. Portoir. Catman. <laughs> hmm. But Monsieur Rubino's photo shows Baron Reese where Dame Catiline should be standing. If we assume that only one person was taken, then one this photograph was one taken. photograph was taken, then this demonstrates that one of the photographs must have been edited in some way. You should just slam the evidence down and be like, bam, inconsistency. This whole courtroom's out of order. Cakes are closed. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Well, I suppose you could be a little more delicate with your words. No, I mean, I can't do that because our evidence was illegally obtained. If I were to present it, Monsieur Robino would ask how we acquired it and the whole trial could be dread. Hey, I did mention that earlier. Good. However, I know that in our evidence bag, we do have the clock with no hands. Yep. In a worst case scenario, I could lose my legal license and we would be arrested for theft. Oh, well, we don't want that. No, we don't. No, no, we don't. <laughs> I should tread lightly. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Very well, the defense may proceed. <laughs> That's a waste of time if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. Yes, cross-examination. Cross 7 p.m. Photograph. It's going to be photograph. Yep. Let's take a closer look at this photograph. Can I click stuff? No. I see a mistake in the photograph. Why is it black and white? <laughs> That's the dumb question, yeah, right? That was... That's the throwaway one. Just to clarify, Monsieur Robinho, photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? That is correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most curious, because I see a mistake. Mistake? Impossible. I told you, Monsieur, the camera is a perfect unbiased device. The photographs it produces are flawless. Falcon, I'm not seeing any uh, mistakes. Perhaps you can be more specific? Certainly. Click on the area of the photograph you believe contains the mistake. The clock in this photograph, there is something not right about it. Oh, isn't that convenient? The defense sees something wrong with the uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client? Don't give me that cocky tone, Monsieur Robinson. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock in that picture. <coughs> oh, man. No, it's a lot of talking. <coughs> I, like, burped a little in my throat and it got Ugh. stuck. No, it feels so funny. I'm sorry, viewers. Oh. Uh, should I continue talking? No, no, I'm fine. If anything, it's going to destroy my throat and make me sound like but Falcon we're naturally. Such a rule, Falcon. <laughs> the photograph clearly shows the clock's hands pointing at seven and six. That much is <coughs> self evident. Which is most curious because the clock in the lounge of the Chateau uh, Grenier has no hands. It uh, it has no hands. The clock is merely a decorative piece, a talking item. Feel free to ask Ben Rogriel or his housemaid if you have doubts. Monsieur Robino, how do you explain this discrepancy? Uh oh, oh shit. I, uh, I, I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. My camera is flawless. There is no mistake, Monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. Maybe there was an error in printing process. An error precisely where the clock hand should be. Please, monsieur, don't patronize me. Allow me to offer a more plausible explanation. You, monsieur Robino, edited the photograph! Uh, edited? I'm no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands upon the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering that the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a handless clock in the photograph just to simply, just to simplify the editing process. I'm sweating here. I, 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 uh... Falcon, your reasoning is absurd. Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph to have taken place at precisely 7.30, it clear 
it clears all the photographs sub subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Rapino created a perfect alibi. Dot dot dot. Of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting? Who's paying him? And why? Was Monsieur Robinho coerced, bribed, threatened? Enough silence. Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Robinho. I'll run away. Fine, you got me! I'm guilty! I did it all! You, you, you did it? Your confession to the murder of Monsieur Grunway? What? No, no, no. I have no idea who killed the frog. I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. Send him to jail. Bake him away, toys. <laughs> <laughs> I was ordered to make changes to the printed photographs, and yes, that included adding hands to the clock. And who did such a thing? You were ordered by whom? I dare not say. Monsieur Rabinho, I strongly advise you to answer the defense's question. You have pledged to speak without fear after all. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws? Did you hear that, Falcon? This is most unfortunate. Monsieur Rabinho, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the ancient regime, after all. But since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. I wish we saw the uh, the jury right now going, <gasps> Ooh, Ooh gas. <gasps> I can't protest. That's the least I deserve for my failure as an artiste. Good day, messieurs. Wow, that was impressive. There they are. Intriguing, pretty good for the It's two. only a little favor. That was impressive. Oh my god. Yeah, that was like a huge thing. So uh, the clock's hands were painted on. So what? Uh, doesn't matter. The photo still depicts Dame Caroline was absent, close to the time of the murder. That's significant. Don't be dense, Monsieur Robinson. If the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered a rel a reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of the uh, night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Catiline was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know that the witnesses the, that the witness was trying to cover for someone, so all possibilities must be accounted for. So what are you saying, Falcon? That the housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was it Senor Pretoire de Miao, perhaps? I don't think so. The housemaid lacks a means or motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Senor Pretoire to- Catman. Catman. To implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron Roar Guil deliberately tried to frame Dame Catiline? Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar of our community who would never do such a thing. Monsieur Robinson, I'm not here to throw accusations. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. However, mayhaps I should offer my opinion. Where'd he come from? There he is. Baron, it's not a time for your witness testimony yet. So you would think prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. Ha 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 ha! Incompetence! <laughs> Indeed. Let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, Judge? Uh, yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good, and I trust that the fence has no objections. He's, like, running the show right now. Look at well, him. Damn, there's a lion. He is the king of the courtroom <laughs> right. right now. Uh, no, no objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc. Now, prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Okay, better no real on the uh, night of the, um... The initial dinner was magnificently, went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grinway left to visit the garden. Dame Catalan followed behind him moments later. Senor Catman, Monsieur Robinho, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grinway and Dame Catalan. That would be when I heard the cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity, garçon? Garçon. Garçon. What's that mean? Boy. Garçon. It's like a waiter. You say garçon when you're at a oh, like restaurant. You be like garçon, and then the waiter comes over. Oh, okay. But it's like boy, like either. servant or something, something like, that. like that. I don't know. I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. He is a servant of justice. 
Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot, and let us establish <laughs> with absolute certainty that I, Baton Grail, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with his cross-examinations. Okay, what part of the statement should we question? Okay, the dinner went magnificently, okay. and that's not it. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Greenway left to visit the garden. Dan Catalan followed behind him a few months later. My housemaid discovered the pair just after the photographer left. Can we, check the, can we check the evidence bag? There's something we're missing. There's the stogie. No. There's something missing. No, we, 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 we went over everything. Know, it's like it's got to be the this cigar? guy. But it is his house, so I feel like that's yeah. not going to help. But did he say something before? Like, the maid, what was the order of events that we, they discussed before? Well, right? ev did, did everyone he... everyone has said that the maid found the two of them. No, but I'm saying prior to that. Um, so when we first arrived at work, the Baron's house, he said specifically, at 7 this happened, at 7.30 this happened, da 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 I thought he said originally that Monsieur Grandwi was potentially in the photo too, but he wasn't. No, 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 I don't think he said that. I think we need to click on the garden and then bring up the, the, cigar. the stogie. Yeah. Okay, let's try it then. Okay. Baron, we saw the meadow scene in your garden for ourselves. It's with all the horses. When was the last time you uh, visited it? Ah, there we it? go. That, that, mm. There we go. Baron Mogwell, when was the last time you ventured into your own garden? That happens. I have quite serious. That's me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to be the Baron so I guess badly. So. I want to be the king of this courtroom fall. You want to be the I like how he has uh he has curls. See that? It's very curly. It's actually kinda of cool. Fashion. As it happens, I quite serious I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. Years? Years, you say? Indeed. That's, That's not, not right. right. Baron, I do not wish to call you a liar. But that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh. oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have visited the garden recently. Balderdash, my word is gold. Show the court this so-called hard evidence that I have been that I've been in my garden. Boom. Boom boom. This was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Look at him go! Right beside where the murder occurred! Uh, a cigar butt? That um could belong to uh, anybody and... Prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Okay, sorry, Baron. That indeed... That is indeed the remnant of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after... Hearing the housemaid's cry for help on that evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. That must be that must have been when I dropped my half smoked cigar in the fountain basin. Dropped? You see, Falcon, that's a personally reasonable perfectly reasonable explanation. Actually it kinda is. I would I would find that believable if the cigar were casually exactly. discarded, but as it happens the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin. A location that could only be accessed uh, accessed with great inconvenience. A little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped. It was deliberately hidden. There are any number of possible explanations. Are there? Perhaps I can only think of one. That is, that you, Baron Roguel, deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And what illicit activities would those be? You want me to spell it out? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You better have murdered Monsieur Grandway! That is why you are trying to keep hidden! Directly accusing me of murder? How shamelessly brazen! That is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon. The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order. Your allegation is baseless. You have no evidence, no, uh, means, motive, or opportunity. No evidence? Think harder, Monsieur Robinson. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Rogel as prime suspect. You want the means? The Baron certainly had the means. His lion's claws are as sharp as the surgeon's blade. Getting a frog belly would be trivial to him. Even Monsieur Rabin, you confess just months ago that he feared his claws. Ridiculous! I would never threaten a man with violence. You want a motive? The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. By removing a business partner, the Baron's share of his railway company increased from one third to one half. This is preposterous! 
And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. Photo photographing the guests in front of a handless clock to make for easy editing and is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go uncontested? Say something! Object! You just told me to shut up! I, um... Oh, you're pitifully useless. After executing the matter, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminating evidence, his finished cigar. He knew that leaving it at the crime scene would raise suspicion, but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it. So out of desperation, he threw it into his fountain, out of the sight of his guests and any snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Senor of Catman, uh, oh. since that would ensure total control over his railway company. Alas, Dame Catline was the first to happen upon the crime scene, so the Baron improvised. This is outrageous! Judge, I demand you to spar this renting lunatic. No, there is no outrage here. Dun, dun, dun. That is, that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. You're a bourgeois of the worst kind. How dare you, Garçon? It's Garçon or Garçon? Garçon? The utter nerve of a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous. I'm nothing like that fat cat bourgeois. I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. No, you're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp. I ought to cut oh. you right here and now like I, like, like a damn frog. <gasps> <gasps> could, uh, could someone please restrain the Baron? <gasps> I'm on it, your honor. Let's go, old man, to the conciergerie with you. Don't touch me, you filthy jackdaw. I can walk myself. This is quite a turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? Oh, uh, well, in a matter of speaking, um, uh, well, to be honest, um, no. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the admirals of the court please be patient in this time. Falcon, that was pretty incredible. Thank you, I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Caroline's innocence. We'll get not a not guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Sparrowson, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Dame Caroline's innocence. All I have done is demonstrate that there is a significant possibility that she is not guilty. I'm not sure I understand the difference. We have reached a decision. In light of recent revelations, it is clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously find the defendant, Dame Cataline Demiao, to be not guilty. Not guilty! That's my gavel situation. Gavel? Gavel it, Fallen. Not, not guilty! guilty! Woo! That could not have we been We won our season. first case! That's only- Oh, we have multiple cases? Monsieur Falcon, but son, you did it. Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. You did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. This was a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. I'll get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. Uh oh, she's gonna tell him something. You're amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Oh, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the motor on the Baron. That was a sheer act of genius. It was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Sparrowson and I just worked at unveiling the truth, given the facts of the case. 
Monsieur Falcon has no need to play coy. The case is over. Play coy? Well, tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. She did it? Did she do it? The evidence just about that. I, well, it's you. Where? It's I right on the bottom. I see it. I... She murdered him. I got an old drunken vulnerable. I seized my opportunity. <gasps> we put the wrong man in jail. It was nothing personal, just business, you understand. This was a power move by her father. Business? Oh my god! Oh my god! I am in, I'm shocked right oh, now. Got, All the evidence pointed to the guy. Baby. My girl, she framed him. We got played! No, continue. We, we got no. played! No. <laughs> to increase my papa's share in the train company, of course, my papa always said that Jungle oh, Frog was the weakest oh. link. It's a power move by her father. Oh. Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Rogriel's cigar butt hidden in the garden. She threw it there. Why oh, put that there? I expect the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brains of Paris's finest. But Falcon proved that Monsieur Robinho's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy paying a visit to Monsieur Grand in the garden. But Papa, I knew I needed an alibi, so I ordered Monsieur Grand Robinho to paint me over Baron Rogriel to add hands to the clock. Oh, that's right, because they didn't finish it. That was the actual one, mm -hmm. but he painted just the hands on it. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative because that could have gone very badly. Fuck. Yup. Yup. What's with the silence? You should both be proud. There are many lawyers in the whole of France who would have won a case like this. Even for a bourgeois kitty like me. Damn it. I think you should leave. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services, straight from my papa's pockets. It's blood money! Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, petit sparrowson. I'm Fuck. like. Falcon, what do we do now? It's double jeopardy, right? We take Falcon? up the case of. The Baron. The Baron. Falcon? 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 You're saying fall went wrong. <laughs> Your game has been saved. You wish to continue. I am so shocked oh. by this turn of events. I, I'm literally speechless. I'm having a hard time formulating words. We got freaking played. I am so. Why would she say anything after winning, though? Why would she? Oh, because she thought that we were acting. She thought all our thing was an act to get her off, when really we were, we were played. That's why she was like, you, so did so, you did so good pinning it on him. And we're like, what the hell are you talking about? She's like, oh, yeah, you know, how you made sure that I could get off and that the Baron would get on. And we're just like, I don't understand what you're talking about. No, no, I understand that. But what's confusing me is the photograph, right? So the photograph that we saw with the mm -hmm. easel, there was mm -hmm. no, there were no hands on that. That, that one was going to be the photoshopped one. Where he, he painted her over him? Yes. Okay. And with... Um, the real one. Because there wasn't enough time to develop it properly by the time of the case. Because remember, it was two days. Yeah, and he said it wasn't going to be ready for three days, mm -hmm. which we should have caught. He instead quickly painted a time on the faceless clock. That way he could still... Because he's being paid by the, the, the cat man and not the lion man. Because cats have claws too. I am so disgusted with us right now. Wow. I'm really... Wow. I can't handle this, Fawen. I can't handle any more Pigeon Lawyer. That is why we must go back in there and prove the innocence of our dear lion friend. I don't think that's going to be the next case. I just hope that when we go to visit him in jail, we're on the other side of the bars. I hope... <laughs> you know, Benedict Cumberbatch would not have been so foolish. We were so foolish, Falcon. Oh, we got. What are we gonna do? We were so excited. Oh. You know what? I think it was orchestrated this way. Then again, it makes me wonder what all our choices. Like, if uh, 
If we if didn't believe her in the beginning. No, no. If Sparrowson went into the uh, the pool, the the aqueduct or whatever, to get the thing, mm-hmm. what if he would not have found anything? Mm-hmm. And because I'm the lawyer person. Uh, Mr. Lawyer Person I was, Bowen. I was able to go in there and Falcon was able to find it because he's a lawyer type. I can't, I can't take this. I can't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. We're going to take a break. Um, thanks again for watching, everybody. Come back next time for some more uh, Avery Attorney as we uh, go on to Act 2. And I'm hoping that we're going to take the case of the lion, dude, uh, and prove his innocence and explain the whole, the whole shebang. Oh, viewers, uh, I think I have the vapors. <laughs> I can't handle this. Yeah, let me, let me fan you off. Fan me off. Fan her off right oh. now. All right. Um, like, comment, subscribe for more videos. Uh, be sure to share the videos with the world and, and spread the channel around. And what do you think of our theory about that the game, it practically dictated the route that we needed to take? Not necessarily. If we intentionally, ha- if we thought she was actually guilty... Then we could have just not, we could have been like, yep, we got nothing to say. What was that red herring all about? You know, I think it was the fact that we weren't supposed to present that evidence. Because there was nothing to present it to or about. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Come back next time. Come back next time. Be sure to uh, follow me on Instagram and And Twitter Twitter. as well. Uh, Twitter. Tweet. Get it. Bird Bird to bird communication following. Yep, yep. All right, guys. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.